Every highway you've ever driven on, every smooth country road, every airport runway, they all have something in common. At some point, a motor grader shaped that surface. These massive machines with their long blades and distinctive profiles have been essential to civilization for well over a century. Yet most people drive right past them without a second thought. Today, the global grader market is worth over $4 billion. But this industry didn't start with diesel engines and geo-tracking technology. It started with horses, blacksmiths, and a simple idea. What if we could level dirt roads more efficiently? Let's take a journey through the fascinating evolution of road graders, from humble horse-drawn contraptions to the technological giants that build and maintain the roads we rely on every day. Before we had graders, road maintenance was back-breaking work. Crews used picks, shovels and wheelbarrows to move earth and fill holes. It was slow, expensive and the results rarely lasted long. The first real breakthrough came in 1885, when Joseph D. Adams, a road inspector from Indianapolis, Indiana, invented something revolutionary. He called it the Little Wonder, and it was the world's first leaning wheel pull grader. Now, what made this so special? Adams understood a fundamental problem. When a grader blade encounters a heavy load of dirt, it naturally wants to slide away from the material. His solution was elegant, wheels that could lean sideways. By tilting the wheels toward the direction the dirt was being pushed, the operator could counterbalance the pressure on the blade. The heavier the load, the more the operator would lean the wheels. This simple mechanical principle transformed the grader from a basic scraping tool into a true earth-moving machine. Suddenly, crews could cut ditches, shape road crowns, and move significant amounts of material with far less effort. Adams didn't have the resources to manufacture his invention at first. So he worked as a traveling salesman, hiring manufacturers to produce machines that he then sold to local government agencies. By 1897, he'd established his own factory in Indianapolis. J.D. Adams and company would go on to become one of the most respected names in road machinery, operating until 1960. Throughout the late 1800s and early 1900s, horse-drawn graders became increasingly sophisticated. Manufacturers experimented with different blade configurations, wheel designs, and frame structures. The Galian Ironworks, founded in Ohio in 1907 by David Charles Boyd and his brothers, became famous for building some of the largest pull-type graders in the industry. These massive Galian machines, some weighing 15,000 pounds with 14-foot blades, were popular throughout the 1920s and 1930s. They were pulled by the largest traction engines and crawler tractors available, and they actually outperformed many early motor graders. But the age of animal power was coming to an end. The first self-propelled grader appeared in 1920, when the Russell Grader Manufacturing Company introduced the Motor Highway Patrol No. 1. This wasn't a purpose-built machine. It was essentially an Alice Chalmers tractor with a grader frame built around it. Other tractor manufacturers quickly followed, including McCormick Deering and Fordson. These early motor patrols had a significant limitation. They were two separate machines forced to work together, a tractor and a grader. The tractor wasn't designed for grading, and the grader wasn't designed for that particular tractor. It was a compromise at best. In 1928, Caterpillar Tractor Company acquired Russell Grader Manufacturing and created a new road machinery division. What happened next would change the industry forever. In April 1931, Caterpillar introduced the Auto Patrol and it was unlike anything the world had seen before. This wasn't a tractor with a grader attached. This was the first true motor grader, designed from the ground up as a single, integrated machine. The Auto Patrol featured several revolutionary concepts. The engine was placed at the very rear, which accomplished two things. It gave operators a clear view down onto the blade and it put more weight over the drive wheels for better traction. The machine rode on rubber tires with puncture-proof tubes, replacing the crawler tracks of earlier designs. Perhaps most importantly, the Auto Patrol introduced power-operated blade controls. Before this, operators had to manually crank hand wheels to adjust the blade, a slow and physically demanding process. 
The new system used a series of levers connected to powered mechanisms, allowing faster, more precise adjustments. The Auto Patrol's basic concepts, rear-mounted engine, rubber tires, integrated frame and power controls became the standard for all motor graders that followed. Although the original Auto Patrol was discontinued after just one year, its traits remain in every modern grader. The 1920s and 1930s saw an explosion of innovation in motor grader technology. Manufacturers like Caterpillar, Alice Chalmers and Galeon were producing machines with internal combustion engines that greatly enhanced performance and versatility. Galeon developed one of the first hydraulic power systems for graders during the 1920s. By the early 1930s, hydraulics were becoming standard equipment, replacing the complex mechanical linkages that had been used before. Alice Chalmers made significant contributions to the industry as well. In 1952, they introduced the AD40, which featured a revolutionary narrow T-frame design. Previous graders used Y-shaped frames that blocked the operator's view. The new frame was narrow all the way back, dramatically improving visibility. When Alice Chalmers acquired the Buddha engine manufacturer in 1953, their engineers gained much greater control over reliability and performance. They soon replaced the GM engines in their graders with their own Buddha diesel power plants. In 1955, Alice Chalmers remarketed their improved machine as the 45. This grader featured a six-cylinder 516 diesel engine rated at 120 horsepower. With a snowplow attachment, it could cut a nine-foot path through deep snow, while a 12-foot wing plow pushed that snow even further to slow drifting on wind-swept plains. For blizzard-prone regions, they offered an optional fully enclosed cab that allowed year-round operation. Meanwhile, Alice Chalmers also produced compact graders that opened entirely new markets. Their Model D, introduced in the late 1940s, weighed just 8,500 pounds and featured a 10-foot moldboard. It was one of the world's first compact graders, and its small size allowed it to work in tight spaces where larger machines couldn't go. This design proved so successful that it remained in production, with updates and revisions for nearly six decades. When World War II erupted, motor graders proved their worth far beyond civilian road construction. The US Navy's construction battalions, better known as the Seabees, used graders extensively throughout the war. In the Pacific theater, Seabees followed combat troops onto beaches and immediately began construction work while fighting was still in progress. They built airfields, often transforming captured Japanese bases into operational Allied strips within days of an assault. At Guadalcanal, the 6th Naval Construction Battalion became the first Seabees to build under combat conditions. They repaired Henderson Field even as Japanese bombers targeted their work. The Seabees filled bomb craters faster than the enemy could make them, keeping the vital airstrip operational for Allied aircraft. Graders were essential for this work. They leveled terrain, removed obstructions and compacted soil to create smooth, functional runways. They built and maintained roads for military vehicles, equipment and supplies. They prepared sites for temporary camps, bases and depots. In the European theatre, Seabees helped prepare for the Normandy invasion, building bases from Milford Haven to Exeter. They constructed facilities throughout Britain that served as staging areas for 1.5 million American troops. By war's end, the Seabees had served on six continents and constructed over 300 bases, they built airfields, airstrips, piers, wharves, bridges, roads, hospitals, barracks, and countless other structures. The motor grader was one of their most important tools. After World War II, demand for motor graders exploded. The construction of the interstate highway system in the United States, along with similar projects worldwide, required enormous fleets of graders. The machines grew larger and more powerful. In 1955, Galeon Ironworks produced the T-700, which set a world record at over 40,000 pounds with 190 horsepower. The same year, Galeon introduced the Grade-O-Matic drive, the first power shift transmission on a motor grader. This system used a torque converter and power shift transmission, providing simple two-lever control of speed and direction. The 1937 Austin Western Model 99 had already introduced several important features. All-wheel drive, all-wheel steering, 
and the ability to crab steer, which allowed the wheels to move laterally while the blade worked at an angle. These capabilities made graders far more versatile. Throughout the following decades, manufacturers continued refining their designs. Articulated frames, which allowed the blade to move independently of the rest of the machine, provided much greater precision. Joystick controls replaced traditional levers, making operation easier and less fatiguing. Diesel technology improved dramatically, offering more power with better fuel efficiency. Today's motor graders bear little resemblance to those early horse-drawn machines, but they serve the same fundamental purpose, creating flat, precisely graded surfaces. The largest production grader currently available is the Caterpillar 24, designed specifically for mining operations. This machine weighs approximately 160,000 pounds. Its 24-foot moldboard can cover massive areas in fewer passes, and an optional 28-foot blade is also available. A C27 engine produces 535 horsepower, enough to maintain the enormous haul roads used by mining trucks that themselves weigh hundreds of tons when loaded. The CAT24 is equipped with technology that would seem like science fiction to J.D. Adams. Automatic cross-slope control maintains the desired road crown for proper water drainage. Fleet management systems track machine location, productivity and maintenance needs in real time. Yet despite all this technology, the basic principle remains the same. A blade, positioned at an angle, moves material sideways while the machine travels forward. From a blacksmith's workshop in 1885 to billion-dollar mining operations today, the motor grader has come a remarkably long way. What began as a simple horse-drawn implement has evolved into one of the most sophisticated pieces of construction equipment ever built. Every manufacturer that contributed to this evolution, J.D. Adams with his leaning wheels, Caterpillar with their integrated design, Alice Chalmers with their compact machines and improved visibility, Galien with their hydraulic systems, Austin Weston with their all-wheel capabilities, each added something essential to the modern grader. The next time you're driving down a smooth road or landing at an airport, take a moment to appreciate the machines and the people who made it possible. From dirt paths to super highways, from wartime airstrips to massive mining operations, motor graders have quite literally shaped the world we live in. And somewhere out there right now, a grader operator is doing exactly what operators have done for nearly 140 years, turning rough ground into smooth road, one pass at a time.